Hello everyone and welcome back to Death Stranding. This is episode 5. Last time we were having a lot of fun figuring out um, doing a lot of side orders, standard orders, uh, back and forth and I was learning a lot more about the, the world through like emails and interviews and all that kind of stuff. And then we ended the last episode uh, checking out a ruined factory uh, as well, at least like part of it uh, for now. So that's a, that's a very that's a very interesting thing for us to, to check out um, once we unlock more doors, I think, and progress through uh, that segment. It's a very interesting information in regards to like uh, a holographic woman and then there was like photo frames and everything like that that was very that was very curious uh but this episode we are going to be making our way back to capital not city uh, as we've been asked to to head back but not before i uh check some emails at our terminal um before we before we leave and we also need to we also need to check on bb you know we always need to check on bb make sure that he's doing okay so uh, apparently, I think it's asking me to customize the BB pod again. Oh, it's just the colors again. Interesting. Did it? I don't think it. I don't think it saved the color that I chose last episode. I think we went for this. So it's given me the same notification again, but that's fine. We got to soothe, soothe our BB. Always soothe our BB. Oh. Because I've gotten better. I've gotten better at shaking him. I used to, I was shaking him like a goddamn, <laughs> like, a, it's like a goddamn soda can and spraying it everywhere. Um, but you need to be much more gentle with him. Um, it, this is why I prefer dogs over over children, guys, because you can shake up a dog full of love and they love it. Babies, too fragile. <laughs> Too fragile. Uh, but we've got some mail and we've also got some data to read through, so we're going to start our episode reading through some more information. So, uh, George Breton, uh, where roads lead? Thanks for stopping by again, Sam. When I was performing maintenance on the buildings the other day, I saw some footprints you left behind. Ah, oh, no. I've read this before as well. I have a feeling that maybe my game didn't save the last things that I did last time. We, we read this stuff. Uh, yeah. That's, that's really strange. Okay, I read those two emails already, and we also customized our BB pod. I think maybe the last things I did at the end of the last episode might not have been saved. Uh, so let's actually check these interviews to see if we read them as well. Yeah, we read these. Cool, we're all good. I don't have to actually read stuff after all. Wonderful. We can get straight into the, we can get straight into the game. Uh, pick up some new orders. Um, we're going to focus on orders that take us back to Capital Not City instead of getting caught up in a lot of the back and forth because I'm sure I will uh, enjoy doing that um, at a at a later time. So let's leave the private room. Let's see if we end up having a um, a flashback with BB. No, not this time. Okay. Not this time. I'm gonna pick up some orders. Actually, I forgot something. I forgot something very important down in my private room, guys. I forgot something very, very important. Um, and so what we're about to do is, uh, very interestingly enough, it has been pointed out to me that apparently... Uh, in the original version of Death Stranding, and it's still there in the original version of, uh, of Death Stranding, is uh, the energy drinks uh, in the original were actually monster energy. It was actually branded, which I think is which I think is so bizarre. I think that's so funny. But today, we pop this open today, and we and we drink together. Except, goddamn, does Norman Reedus scull an energy drink much faster than anyone else possibly can? <laughs> he just does a fucking slips it all down. Um, obviously, mine is green. Obviously, mine is green. It's alright, guys. Death Stranding removed its product placement, but I'll I'll do it instead. <laughs> I'll do it instead. Um, Alright, let's have a look at these emails. These are new ones. 
Hey Sam, is it just me or are things pretty lively around here ever since you first came through? Been checking the staff's vitals lately and everyone's in good health and good spirits it seems. Time was we'd freak out and start fighting over the smallest shit. Nowadays we're all smiles and handshakes, backslapping. Hell, I've even doled out a few hugs. Best of all, we've got peace of mind. And you know what? I think we're using less smart drugs because of it. Might be our, might be our bodies are producing oxy on their own again. And if so, the day we ditch the smart drugs altogether could be just around the corner. You made it all possible, Sam. You've been a hero to us. You've given us hope. And then American Reconstructionism, not just a dream. Dear Sam, thanks yet again. It's getting to the point, if it hasn't already, where words won't cut it. They broke the mold when they made you, seriously. It's been here, uh, it's been here since Bridges I first came through, and I was damn proud to be assigned to this posting. Uh, but truth be told, there were times I was worried the second expedition would never happen. What if they couldn't get the Cupid to work? What if American Reconstructionism was all a silly pipe dream? Looking back, I can't blame myself for nearly losing faith. I never saw the real America for myself. But then you came along and gave me something to believe in again. You have to finish it. For all of us. Make us whole again. There you go. Alright, I like that you get new like new mail and communication every time you get to your private room. People just people just reaching out to you, you know? People sending you likes, giving you oxy. You know, making you making you feel good. That's what I that's what I wanted to do. Oh, hang on. There we go. So when we do this scene, we get a memory flash. So when we're plugging BB in on the way up, that's when we get one of these. Sure what's going on there, but we'll, we'll figure that out. I have faith, we'll figure that out eventually. Um, oh man, uh, I should have probably checked out the weapon cabinet or and the my clothing because that exclamation mark is going to annoy me now. Uh, all right, standard orders. Um, let's have a look. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so these ones here I've already done before, and you can actually do them again. Because it has your best performance. That's a good way to know if I am doing new missions or repeating myself. So we'll pick up the one for Capital Not City, because that's where we're headed. We don't need to fabricate anything. What do I arrange, please? Alright, right, 127 out of 185. I mean, to be honest, I could just chuck this stuff on the bike. Probably better to put this on the bike. Actually, I could just recycle these metals. I don't need those. Awesome. Head on out. I'll recycle those metals. I think I must have picked those up last time. Uh, re 
recycle metals, please. Give me some stuff. Thank you for your continued support. You're welcome, Bridget. Thank you for your contribution. Wonderful. Alright, everything's on the bike. Let's head on out. Keep on keeping on. Thank you for all of my thank you for all of my cheerleaders. All of my cheerleader signs. Um I think it's probably a good idea for me to I'm not going to go back to the wind farm, because there'll, there'll be jobs at the wind farm. There's six orders available. It'd be nice if you could see the orders from here. What type of... Oh, no. You can just see... View orders for delivery. Oh, you can view orders available for delivery to particular cities. That makes sense. I think another thing you could do is when you're plotting the route, if you hold down... So something that I hadn't done yet, but if I hold down square... There you go, okay. Oh! It makes a, it makes a waypoint line. Okay, that's great. That's, that makes so much sense. And it literally maps it out for you. Oh, that's beautiful. There are so many pathways now that I don't even know which one I should which one I should try and take. But if I do this, if I Oh okay, I see, I see how this works. Okay. So hold square, go from there, hold square, go from Alright, I see, I see. I know my way back anyway, but I think this is actually quite cool how you can hold it down to uh, plan your course essentially through everything to then make your way back to Capital Not City. That's really neat. And now I can now I can drive back. And follow this pathway through probably not the best route ever, but I mean it's it's a start. <laughs> it's a start. And then I'm gonna wanna I'm gonna wanna pick up anything that I can find that takes us to to Capital Not City. Um, and I want to take this this brief moment to say that in regards to the in regards to this playthrough, it's uh, it's definitely a it's definitely a work in progress in terms of me um, in terms of me coming up with the best way to structure everything in in the game, like how like what kind of content I want to showcase um, like the missions that I do um, and like that sort of stuff and I think the best way uh, that I would like to do it is I would like to have periods of episodes where it is like a bit more of that downtime me running back and forth doing some missions that I think could be that I think could be pretty fun uh, to do without me damaging cargo like an idiot. <laughs> Um, I just think that there's like moments, like I did that last episode where I advertised a playlist that I created specifically for this playthrough, um, that I that I created with some like lovely songs, and I was thinking, you know, I could have some moments like that in the in the playthrough where if I decide to do some some back and forth and and some missions like that, that we could just include some downtime you can put on a playlist of your own and like mute my volume and I can try and put some songs in here that are uh, you know the because the game's copywriting me anyway so I may as well just uh, may as well just have fun with it at this point and just put put some songs in while I'm in some downtime but like let me know like some feedback let me know if you think that's uh, a good idea or if like you know, it's it's worth doing. I mean, it'll be completely optional. You can just skip past it if you don't if you don't want it. Um, but I think that's that's also like a core part of what this game is. You know, is a, a lot of like doing the the downtime deliveries and stuff like that. And 
I'm not always going to have things to say or things to talk about. I don't have endless commentary as much as I can talk about things that I'm passionate about for really long periods of time. Uh, I tend to do that more in a back and forth conversation, <laughs> not just talking to a talking to a screen. I try my best. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely let me know like how you feel about that. Like, I don't want to just only have. I don't want to only have just like everything that's story related because a lot of a lot of what the game is 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 this some some downtime and chilling out and having good times, just being a post-apocalyptic delivery man, you know. Because you know you know it, I know it. The world will end, we will be in a post-apocalyptic scenario, and Amazon will still be delivering packages, you know? So, I'm sure there'll be many times where I want to talk about this game, and even probably Metal Gear Solid, and Kojima, and how, how crazy that man is, but, um, you know... I'm trying to remove all of my markers. There we go. Because I'm clearly just choosing my own route anyway. Because I'm going back to the <laughs> to this place to drop off some packages and probably pick up another job to Capital Nut City. Um, I don't know. Um, just, just chill out with me, guys. Just just chill out with me. It's a it's a nice it's a nice change of pace from a game like Bloodborne that I've been that I'm also playing on the channel right now, uh, and even Mass Effect to an extent where it's it's a game where I can just um, chill out chill out a little bit more, um, and uh, it's a it's a whole different type of experience that I'm that I'm really that I'm really grateful for and really in enjoying actually really enjoying. Uh, we will not entrust any cargo. I will deliver those. I will deliver those myself. I'm so glad you're here. Gotta say, you truly are incredible. Thank you. I am the legend. Now let me take on some orders from you, please. Good work. New order. Okay, uh, this one for Capital Not City. Oh yeah, deliver BT area fish. Right, you have to get the fish and then take it to Capital Not City. And I have done... Oh, this one wants to go to the Ludens fan. I've got something to take to him anyway. So delivery, series of classic novels, Porters in the Storm. The Ludens fan. Wonderful. These three I've already done before, so I don't have to worry about those. Sweet. Oh, we already have the fish. Never mind. Order assigned. Delivery parameters updated. Time limit okay. set. Ah, uh, the fish we have 45 minutes to do. That's fine. We will... We will make that. I accidentally put something on my back, but that's fine. We'll be driving anyway. Uh, let's go to the Ludens fan. He's not too. He's not too far away. He's just up there. He's just up there, and we got 45 minutes to make it back to Capital Nut City. We'll be able to do that once I offload some stuff. Um, but yes, yeah, so something that I was like uh, talking about in a, in a previous episode, and I've I've mentioned this before in a, in a couple of discussions, is uh, just the the sheer amount of research that Kojima does and must do with his like content is uh it's it's insane it's it's insane uh that man puts in puts in work um someone actually mentioned this in a in a comment uh which was really cool it's like talking about like police knots even like one of his earlier games like like how many how many books he read just for like research into into that game like he read a lot of stuff and um it, i think it definitely shows i think it's pretty like it, for, for those of us that really like to like actually take in all of the all of the details in in the story and all of the like real world history and information that goes into the game i think we we definitely see uh we definitely see how much work 
uh, goes into goes into these games and the story and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think I think it's great. Um, you know, it's also great is going two kilometers an hour <laughs> while I've got spears being thrown at me in mule territory. We're doing great. You're doing great, Sam. World's best delivery driver. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I, I love the amount of research and work that goes into this stuff because, like, there are there are like periods in time where you, you really just we get gifted almost with uh, very very unique minds in terms of stories that can be told and you know there's plenty of those a lot of those in 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 Japanese uh, video game uh, culture uh, that we you know that we that we love but there's there's a lot in Western media as well. Um, it's just insane to get like their perspective on the world events and and all of that kind of and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm like, while like there are moments where I can take a lot of what Kojima does, and <laughs> a lot of it can be silly, or you're just like, oh, this is ridiculous. Um, I really do respect how much. Uh, like how committed he is to bringing something unique to the table. At least I think that is that that should at least be uh, respected. Like you know, he, he certainly has a reputation. Um, I think that that can't be uh, that can't be contested. Man certainly has a very unique approach to storytelling uh, that I think is really cool. Because I'm when when you when I sit down and play this game, or I was even getting to a point I sit down and play Metal Gear Solid. You know, you just go like. It's it's exciting because you're like, what am I going to, what am I going to experience today? You know, what what the hell's going to go on today that's going to blow my mind in some weird sense? You know, um, whereas there are many 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 video games that you can play and you know exactly what's going to happen. You're like, oh yeah, this is going to happen in this story and this is how this is going to go and uh, everything's very easy to predict or easy to understand. Uh, I like a game that challenges you in ways that you don't expect, you know, uh, mentally, uh, emotionally, uh, you know, that just have very, very interesting, very interesting um, takes on the world and it's characters that you you can't predict that you don't expect. I have no idea what the fuck's going on in this game, and I love it for that, because I'm sure, uh, I'm sure I would love to delve into like video essays and a lot of people's doing their own research and an, um, analysis on these games, so I can actually like understand it better. This game is about community, uh, and I I, th I think that uh, I think that's literally like a, a, a comment a fourth wall commentary on this game as well. You know, I genuinely think it's like a fourth wall commentary of just like this game is about community, not just in the game of building bridges and building structures and helping each other out and leaving signs for each other and like re reconnecting and rebuilding and stuff, but also like on the concept of us as a community playing this game is we all seek to understand it together of what the hell is going on because the characters in the game are doing the same thing that we are they're like oh this stuff is only a recent discovery we're still figuring it out we're doing our own research what does it mean so they're seeking answers we are seeking answers and we're doing it together as a community you know what i mean but also i can definitely sympathize with people that may, might be like, this game's not for me, it's just too much. Because the same people have felt that way about, you know, um, even some of the Metal Gear Solid stuff that Kojima's done. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. Good work. New order available. The paths we walk become roads, Sam. See the tracks you left behind? They tell a story. If you were a spy on a mission, you'd have failed. But you're not. So we Whose footprints are these? They're proof that you exist. Keep leaving that proof. Let people know you're out there. Give them the courage to come together again. As you expand the network and aid your fellow Americans, you strengthen the bonds between us all and blaze a trail for them to follow. It's all about connection, maybe. 
Uh, we do have... Oh, I haven't done any of these jobs before. You see how it's so easy to get caught up in this. I need to take this to Capital Not City anyway, but I also need to get this and return it to the Luden's fan. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Capital Not City. I'm going to go to Capital Not City, goddammit. And I'm going to do the Luden's fan mission next time. You know how hard that is to not just do that side mission straight away? I'm showing restraint. I'm showing restraint. Okay. <sighs> showing restraint, okay? Let's go. We're going to Capital Not City. Whether I like it or not. Because, honestly, honestly, uh, I could just sit on this vehicle and pick up orders and just deliver back and forth for hours. Like, the, the funny thing is, I feel like this is a game that is either going to click with you, or it is going to annoy the hell out of you, you know? And I think that all depends on what type of experience you're after when playing a video game. People might want way more action, way more engagement in their video games, and that's perfectly valid, because uh, those are really fun too, and I like playing those games, but I like to play a variety of things. I like to have a, uh, a mixture of different experiences. I don't want to play the, I don't want to play the same thing every time, you know? Uh, I want to be able to play a game where I can do nothing but deliver packages on a beautiful landscape, and then if I ever want to change over to something else, I can play a game where I'm, uh, you know, I'm playing Bloodborne, or I'm playing something that's, uh, like, like, constantly, almost constantly, like, thrilling and, and, you know, mentally, mentally stimulating in a, in a different way. And I, th I, I think that's why a game like this, or even, like, you know, uh, so many different types of games are inherently necessary in order for like the the industry to even like survive and um, and come up with with new things because otherwise we're just stuck in the same trend of just boring repetitive media like a lot of a lot of Hollywood gets criticism for repeating the same tropes and everything being highly predictable remakes remasters um, you know, adaptations, all of that kind of stuff, and a, and a lack of original content, you know? Like, genuinely, and a, a lack of original content. Uh, and we get something like this, which is ridiculously original, <laughs> and everyone's like, this sucks! <laughs> so, I like, to keep an, I like to keep an open mind. I genuinely like to keep an open mind. And that's why, that's why I really like indie games as well, because uh, indie games do this thing where it's not such a huge, it's not such a huge focus on uh, graphics and being a triple A experience and a, you know, something like that. It's like, here's something that's more of a focus on the storytelling or like we, we use the, the gameplay, we use the gameplay in a very unique way, uh, you know, to, um, to really sell you this story and, and this world and for you to have a good time and I think that's uh, that's something that's uh, that's very important you know like uh, a game I played recently was 12 minutes and like that's an indie game I mean it uses a, a pretty star studded star studded cast of characters but um, with its voice cast but I think it manages to get away with that because it doesn't have many characters um, it doesn't have many characters but it was such an interesting concept. Uh, like I, when I, and same thing with when I played Limbo and Inside from Playground Studios. Uh, those games were amazing. Yeah, no, there's just uh, there's just a lot more to experience to be done out there than a game that's just uh, shooting and shooting and killing people and that's it for for engagement. Like you can have so much more fun. Like, am I having fun right now? No. That's not a bad thing, because I am taking this moment to, you know, talk and talk with you guys and ramble my thoughts and hopefully not bore you, but I mean, you have probably skipped through all this by now and that's perfectly valid. 
because you're like, wow, he's just doing nothing. Um, but that's it, guys. That's what this game is all about. It's about riding your bike on terrain that it shouldn't be ridden on, and the fact that I should take that rope up, but I'm emotionally attached to this motorcycle, and I will take the, I will take the hard way. Because it's fun! Because then I get- because I can do that! <laughs> Alright, let me get around here. See, it's it's all part of the journey, guys. It's all it's all part of the journey. It's the this game is all about cool wishful thinking. I'm gonna set up a really nice route to take to end up back at Capital Not City, and then you just go, you know what? That route doesn't work because it it is asking me to climb up vertically on a mountain, and I, I'm physically unable to do that. You know, I'm physically unable to do that. I'm going to ride my bike into multiple rocks instead. That sounds much better. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna round out that ramble now. No more no more ramble on the consumption of various types of media and what that means for our culture and society guys. Let's let's leave that to bigger minds than than mine. Because I need to focus on riding down a mountain with a with a trike. Yeah. You know what, I'm really glad that this track has just such insanely good balance. Like, if the if the bike could fall over, if you could get knocked off the bike, that wouldn't that just wouldn't work for me, you know? Because I'm I'm way too I'm way too careless on the bike. <laughs> I'm reckless intentionally because it's so good. God damn, I'm loving these bridges that are built. See? Look at this time sensitive delivery. Absolutely no stress whatsoever. We'll, we'll make it. We'll, we'll get there. In 45 minutes. We just had a nice little slow cruisy, cruisy drive. Um, and like, you know, a, another note is like, if I do decide to include a little more downtime like this, including the journey, having some conversations with you guys, um, I, like I'm happy to make the episodes longer as well if you guys want that and also if I have time for it like it ultimately comes down to how much time that I have but uh, I'm happier to you know also include longer episode length so it's not just this episode won't be wow I'm apocalypse and his ramble to capital not city and all right guys see you next time <laughs> you know it's the I like to I like to make sure that every episode has something substantial in there whether it be story gameplay uh, commentary all sorts of all sorts of stuff. Anything for Capital Not City, this thing. I'm not picking up anything else that isn't related to my destination. Right now. So many bridges. And this is why I love the fact that there is such an online uh, an active online community for, for Death Stranding. Keep on keeping on. Because I get to slowly go over a bridge. Thanks to someone else's hard work. Thanks to Difa 1984's hard work, you know? So if you guys have the director's cut, I don't know if it's just the director's cut uh, or whether the original... I don't know whether both versions are connected through the same world or whether they're treated as different servers or anything. I don't know how any of this works. Uh, but if you guys are playing Death Stranding, build some stuff. You might see your name pop up in my videos. Like, Buffalo Bill, if you're out there, thanks. Keep on keeping on. You know? Who knows? You could, you could end up, you could end up on my, on my screen sometime. Oh yeah, and, th and, and there you go guys, a flawless, a flawless journey. This isn't what I was talking about as well, by the way, in terms of the stuff that I would keep in. I just felt like I had some stuff to say, to talk about, and to ramble about. But uh, like last episode, there was like a situation where it's like, no face cam, just me, just driving and putting on some tunes and, and stuff like that. Like, let me know if you'd like more segments like that. I'll probably have something like that in this episode as well, and then we'll see if you guys like that or not. But I certainly think it could be like a way to like, I don't know, have a nice little taste of unique... Uh, 
chilled out gameplay moments in uh, in this game. Look at all my goddamn packages for Central Knot City right now. Let's offload, goddamn it. First, deliver your cargo, then you can take on new requests. Oh yeah. Uh, that goes back to distribution center. So I'm sure I'll head back there later myself. How you doing, Sam? Yeah, bud. Gotta say, I really appreciate you going the extra mile. Also, just watching this star get massive with like all of the stuff that I've done, even though my miscellaneous is at 42, it's so good. <laughs> Satisfying. Also, the clothes that Nick Easton has, like his uh, his like little jumpsuit, looks first deliver your cargo. Looks very comfortable. It looks very comfortable. I kind of want this outfit. So have a look at his clothes when he pops up again, because it looks good. Doesn't that look so comfortable? Maybe not the sleeves. The sleeves look a little bit strange, but that looks like it might be like protective against like time fall, because it's like a weird little material. But the jumper, like it's like a tracksuit, looks good. I want some Bridges clothing. It looks comfortable. You need to be comfortable in the apocalypse. I think I feel like that's the most important thing, you know. I only got an A for one of them. Disappointed. Yes, you are now tire less easily. Man, stuff gets easier as you go along. There you go. That's for sure. See you soon, brother. Yeah, I want a Bridges hoodie. What the hell? Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. Uh, I might rest in our private room because we've got a lot of emails. So we'll, we'll take a rest while we're here, uh, and then we'll accept some more orders. So let's do that now. Your work is great. Yes. You might be missing out on helpful tips or even special rewards. At least make sure to read the priority mails. This is like, I, this is something that they repeat in dialogue. They did this in Metal Gear Solid Five, when it's like, "That's an enemy gunship. You're gonna, you're gonna extract him. Really? You're gonna extract him? It's like, yes, yes, Miller, I am, and I'm going to read my emails too." That's what I came here for. All right, Nick Easton, delivery volume and your porter grades. How are your porter grades these days, Sam? I'm sure you're aware that trying to account for all five factors is the basic premise, but if you're anything like me, you just want to deliver as much delivery volume as you can, right? Are you sure? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> if so, you can always just load yourself up with a massive hole and aim for a bridges bonus for total cargo weight. Nothing wrong with the simple approach. Of course, in the good old days it was easier. Roads were much better back then, so all you had to do was chuck all your stuff on the back of a truck and go for a drive. Can't do that now though, even if you've got a truck, they're usually more trouble than they're worth. Hell, sometimes you'll see them just sitting on the side of the road, locked and abandoned. Anyway, on the bright side, since lugging big loads of cargo is so hard these days, folks are really grateful when a porter manages it. Hence the bonuses. Here at the Distro Center, for example, we have to make sure we've got plenty of food and materials in stock, which means we have to make every delivery count. I dread to think about what would happen if we ran out of supplies. Oh, and how about this for some extra motivation? I found that my obsession with delivery volume has actually made me stronger and able to carry even more. Well, I've said my piece, and now you know how to make yourself popular around these parts. Stack your cargo high. Well, that's certainly what I've been doing. Careful, Nick Easton. You'll turn into a mule if you get obsessed like me. Casualties of Twilight. Hey Sam, you really helped me out there. Thanks man. And that book you brought me? It's actually a movie script. I mean, I knew that all along. Sorry if I didn't keep you updated. Anyway, it's an interesting movie from an interesting time, back when the world was divided. <laughs> Dude. The world was divided. East versus West. The Cold War. 
they called it. The movie is called Casualties of Twilight, and it's about two lovers who are caught up in the ideologies of the global conflict and about how they destroy the world in order to be together. It's just a short movie, but it's interesting from a psychological perspective. Some people actually say it predicted the Death Stranding. I didn't think I'd get mixed up with a consignment of cargo that would be stolen by mules. I really panicked once I heard it was gone. So yeah, thanks for bringing it back. I really appreciate it. Just thinking about that intro for Metal Gear Solid 3. The East vs. West. Ludens are our saviors. It was great seeing you again, Sam. You really are one in a million. Oh, so I started using the chiral network to look into the history of the whole Ludens thing. I don't have it all figured out yet, but it's clear that it was pretty important. I mean, the game it symbolized was... Uh, friggin' huge, complete, uh, completely unlike anything that had come before. It exploded man's potential to play in exactly the way Huizinga described when he coined the phrase Homo Ludens. We had this th he had this theory that play was older than even culture itself and was at the heart of what made us who we are. I believe that if we can rediscover the kind of play he was talking about, we can undo the damage caused by chiral contamination and rid the world of homo gestalt and homo demons once and for all. To think that games could be the key to saving humanity. <laughs> Interesting. Guys, this actually, uh, this is this is actually Kojima telling us uh, in a cryptic speech that uh, if we can rediscover the kind of play he was talking about, uh, which is Metal Gear Solid, we can undo the damage caused by Konami contamination and rid the world of uh, awful studio executives once and for all, uh, and then we can have Kojima making Metal Gear Solid Six, which is the which is gonna be the game about Solidus Snake raising Jack the Ripper. Uh, that's the game that I would like to see, where you see the perspective of Solidus Snake raising Jack the Ripper, and then you also have Big Boss uh, creating Out of Heaven, and it's a prequel to the original Metal Gear, and then Metal Gear 1 and 2 remakes. Make it happen. All right. Let me interact with my exclamation mark equipment rack so I can get rid of that exclamation mark. Uh, change the color scheme. How many colors we got? I just like the stealth black hat. It's good. Ooh, I actually like the snow white. That looks cool. That's like uh, the color of like uh, color of a skull. I like that. It actually looks really good. Like skull colored. There you go. And now I no longer have the exclamation mark on my screen. Um, I don't think there's. I every time we've re in, uh, interacted with the shower, there has been stuff. I think we get a little bit of like dialogue with Hartman. So I'm gonna try. Oh, like, sorry, Hartman. And then I'm going to try and see... I mean, there's no harm done taking a shower. It refreshes our EX grenades that we haven't really been using. But um, there's no exclamation mark, so I don't know if like we're going to get like cutscene or dialogue when we do this every time. But I guess we'll see how we go. I can get into like the habit of doing it. It does say that we can skip it, though, so yeah, I think that it might just be nothing. I just don't want to miss out on potential uh, dialogue from characters and stuff like that. We still haven't come face to face with uh, Hartman or Mama yet. I'm wondering if we will. EX grenade number zero. Okay, so if you shower, you just get grenades, and that's it. That's fine. All right, let's let's get the hill. Let's get out of here. Oh, my terminal had another exclamation mark. I think that was my music. Maybe it's my manual, which is filled with tips. Let me just scroll past this to get rid of all of these. I hope I didn't just skip a BB memory scene. Otherwise, I'll be very annoyed with myself. I think I might have. That's a shame. That's all right. If I've missed any... If I miss a cutscene like that, I'm sure I will 
they're mostly just Mads Mikkelsen interacting with BB, but they're very interesting, so that's why I'm kind of sad that I just accidentally skipped coming out of there. I don't think, because I think the cutscene starts off zoomed in on the BB's little thing there, so I just need to keep an eye out for that. I don't even know if it allows me to skip them, so Sam, we might be fine. I received word from Mama that she's completed her anti-BT weapon. Prototypes of her design form a part of your next shipment. A delivery of relief supplies for the people of Port Knot City. Port Knot City is a fair distance from BT territory, but the weapons should come in handy if any stray too close. They'll also provide people with the means to defend themselves when traveling outside the city limits. The shipment also includes a variety of medicines, as well as human sperm and egg samples. These specimens are essential for maintaining genetic diversity as they were donated by civilians living outside the major population centers. Wow. By taking advantage of Kyrelium's temporal properties, we can ensure they remain viable for as long as required. After the shipment's been processed, connect the Cupid. Now, once that's done, the entire region will be integrated into the Chiral network. Afterwards, you'll be pushing on to Lake Knot City. So, we've included relief supplies for the people there as well. Of course, to get there, you'll need to cross over the lake in between. Details on that will be in a second order you'll need to accept then. Without a doubt, this will be your longest run for us to date. Ooh. Make sure you've got everything you need. Let's get it, baby. I'm ready. Sam, this is Die Hard Man. I'm going to need you to deliver cum and eggs to this place. <laughs> I actually, I like the premise that they do have, um, like, uh, they've got, like, you know, storage of, like, eggs and, and sperm, so, you know, you gotta keep the, gotta keep civilization flowing, man, gotta keep the babies coming, gotta make babies and babies and children and make sure that humanity can survive, and also... Like, the diversity aspect of that is really cool as well, but it's it's just funny to get to the end of that and being like, Die Hard Man's like, Sam, I'm gonna need you to deliver some cum. Can you do that? You gotta ensure the safety and continuation of our species, Sam. So, Sam, I'm gonna need you to eat every single one of those eggs. <laughs> God damn it. Orders for Sam. Aid package delivery. Look how look at the distance we are going, god damn it, to Port Knot City. Number of items to deliver four. Let's do it. Listen to the briefing. This order's critical, so humor me while I review the details. Port Knot City's your first destination. You're to deliver relief supplies and bring it into the network. Lake Knot City is your second destination. Again, you'll be delivering relief supplies. You'll also be carrying prototype anti-BT weapons, which will give us a chance to see how they perform in the field. Mama will brief you on usage, so pay close attention. And Sam, as a reminder, this run is no joke. You'll be covering a record distance. Don't take any chances. We're gonna make sure we got our boots ready and our batteries charged. Deliver all four containers of aid. Except That's a transfusion bag containing blood drawn from you. While equipped, it'll gradually replenish yours. Interesting. Blood bag. A bag filled with Sam's blood. Equipping it will restore Sam's blood levels over time by means of continuous transfusion via the cufflinks. If you are carrying multiple blood bags, a new bag will automatically be switched in as soon as the current one is emptied. If you are using a blood draining a blood draining weapon, blood will be drained from blood bags before it is drained from Sam's body. Blood bags can be stored in utility pouches. Are there weapons that drain your blood to use? And then hematic grenades. Sam, this is our first attempt at developing an anti-BT weapon. I had to work fast with what we had, so they're basically modified hand grenades. At least, that's how they're meant to function. They've never actually been tested in the field. Who knows? You might be the first person to kill a BT. And wouldn't that be something? But, even if they do work, don't forget that they're fueled by your blood. Use too much, and you'll give yourself anemia. Wow. Okay. 
Interesting, a non-lethal anti-BT weapon. While aiming, Sam's blood will be transfused into the grenade, which will explode upon impact when thrown. If any blood bags are equipped, these will be drained first. Can potentially drain a lot of Sam's blood from his body, so take care to avoid amenia. anemia. Okay. Aid. Spurman eggs. Okay, gotta carry that on your back, man. Gotta make sure that's protected. A medicine pack, anti BT weapons, and more anti BT weapons. We believe that practice makes perfect, so we've added an order to encourage you to take your new weapon to the firing range. Better to learn how to use it in a safe environment than when your life is at stake. Am I right? Hard work pays off in the end. Yes, that's a that's a good idea. We'll do that. Uh, so. Let me... What have I got that's the heaviest? Anti-BT weapons. Get onto my bicycle. Get onto my bicycle, please. Uh, let's do the firing range, because I want to see how the hell these grenades work. Order of time. Okay, so... Firing range, please. I want to see what the hell's going on with these grenadas. We're learning today. I genuinely love that there's like a, a firing range to test everything out and you can do like um, like drills and stuff that's really handy. Um, blood bag. Give me that. And give me that. Oh yeah. Um, this is the blood bag. Okay. Well, let's equip that. All right, we'll equip the blood bag, right? And uh, um, we need to make sure that we're wearing a hat. All right, that's very important. We need to make sure we're wearing a hat and also sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then this guy. Further. Uh, harder you press R2, the further the grenade will travel. <laughs> it explodes instantly. It explodes on impact. Look at that. That's my own blood. Yeah! Oh. Yeah, dude, how good is that? There's a throw. That's sick. And then the blood bag. I'm I'm checking it getting drained. Hell yeah. You can throw so far. I love that. That's so sick. All right, let me just check out if we got any drills about it. <laughs> we do. Eliminate all BTs and destroy all targets. All right, let's let's check this out. Let's, be let's begin the drill. Destroy all targets make your way to the goal area. So we've got Hematic Grenade. We just got a bunch of them. Did I get them both? I love that there's an underarm throw or an overarm throw depending on how you uh, how you aim it. Beep. Beep. This music is so good too. Oh no, that was a blue target. I'm not supposed to hit those. Damn it. Oh, we can pick up more grenades. I was gonna say, I'm like, I'm gonna run out. 
some stuff. Paramedic. I've, I've got a blood bag. How does it taste? Nyong. Is ever close together? No. Anyway. Coughing on my own blood. One target remains. Oh. Damn it, I went the wrong way. I'm literally covered in blood. <laughs> I'm covered in my own blood. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I did it. Blood grenade mission complete. Yeah, mission complete, boss. <laughs> Covered in blood. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I accidentally destroyed one blue target. Let's see how I can do that to um, kill BTs. Let's check out this next one. Eliminate all BTs. stand still It's literally blood rain. Holy shit. <laughs> Whoa. I see you. What are you hiding behind the thing? Gotcha. Oh my god, is that a tiny one? That's a tiny one, do you see that? Oh my god, it's like a baby one! Mm. Holy crap, it's like a baby one! What the hell? The fact that while it's raining you use one of them and it's literally blood rain. RAINING BLOOD! Yeah! Get out of my life! How do we hold our breath again? Oh, R1, that's right. Did that work? Or did that, did that explode too early? Automatically equips another one, that's good. 
just like it said it would. No. Okay, I'm actually, I'm fine to end the drill now. I know how it works, that's fine. We got so close. I'll do it in my own time to complete that and get a ranking, but we know how it works. It's literally just throw the thing at the thing. It works though, god damn. All right, let's leave. That's good to know. So keep, if you keep still, they'll appear. Chuck them at them. Bada bing, bada boo. We've just exploded some BTs with our own blood. Sam's blood special, baby. Secret ingredient, sperm. Oh, it's so nice to not be carrying so much cargo. Look at my speed. It's inhuman. Love it. Alright, so longest journey yet. We've got a bike, we can charge it, we've got boots, we're good. It's gonna be a fun journey. We might have, we might have some cargo that needs to be taken to Port Knot City, and then after that we're going to Lake Knot City. I'm definitely gonna be picking up some of these smaller pieces of cargo on the way, because I'll hit up my my locations. Sam, having dooms gives you advantages most folks don't have. But as capable as you are, you're also a member of Bridges now. An organization filled with experts in a whole variety of fields, all of whom are ready and willing to help. The team is here for you, Sam. All you have to do is ask. Got it? Good. Does that mean I have like a codec that I could, like, I really wish that there was like a codec uh, that we could talk to these people. Um... Could talk to these people uh, on the go, like uh, Die Hard Man, Dead Man, Heart Man, Mama, you know. Uh, we got another piece of mail. Your bridge link grade makes the world a better place. Hey Sam, sounds like you're still showing us how it's done. I've been making more and more deliveries myself though, however you know. The Oxy really helps me to cope with the fear, so thanks for that. But don't go thinking I've got ice in my veins or anything. I still panic easy and still drop plenty of cargo when I do. Yeah, I'm the only one though. I found plenty of stuff that some other porters must have lost on a run. I try to do the right thing, take what dropped cargo I can to the nearest post box, and leave weapons and gear in share lockers. Won't lie, sometimes I feel like saying fuck it and letting it lie, but what goes around comes around, right? I help someone recover lost cargo, someone will do the same for me. That's the essence of the bridge link grade. Most of us will never be legends like you, no shame in that, but if we work together and make connections, well we can at least make the world a better place. And that's where bridge links come in. Together we can accomplish so much more than we ever could on our own. A good bridge link grade will only make all work better. So I think that's uh, this thing here, bridge links. A bridge link is another way of describing the connection between you and another porter. If you want to forge a powerful bond, consider a strand contract. Here you can view a list of other players you've interacted with, along with their details. You can also further strengthen your connection to other players here through the formation of strand contracts. Forming a strand contract with a player makes their structures and lost cargo easier to see. Strand contracts can be formed after reaching bridge link grade 10, which we're currently at 14. You can form strand contracts with friends who play the game via the friends tab. I've received 1400 likes from other players. And I've delivered 189 pieces of cargo, baby. It's fucking. This game is. This game's fun. This game's fun. Delivery is fun. Uh, I just need to focus on what I need to pick up and deliver where. A lot of stuff for the way station, which is good, because that's where we're headed first. Those Capital Not City packages will have to. We'll have to wait. We'll have to get delivered by someone else. Picking up all of George Baton's slack. The things that he's dropped. Ah, yeah. Come on, Sam. You can do it. That's right. Maybe. 
Rope, who needs it? I have trike. I know I'm not alone in doing this. I know I'm not alone in doing this. For those of us who have played Elder Scrolls, we ride our horses up the mountainside instead of taking the long way around. Ooh, we're close to BTs. No? Yes? Maybe. Oh, we're in time for. I need to get out of here. I might turn off that of uh, that setting uh, to make it slow mo every time we encounter BTs. Like this. I can't move. Okay, we're good. Just trying to like I might disable this in settings. I think it's just to focus on the fact, just to m draw your attention to that this has been activated. But I think it's quite, it's quite noticeable on its own anyway. Okay, let's just slowly drive away from the direction that BB is facing the thing in and get out of this time fall. Yes, 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 yes. See, I love, I love rain. I love rain. So it's unfortunate that the rain in Death Stranding is so bad. It's so bad for you. Go, 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 go. Oh, BB, I will... Here, hold on, give me a sec. Give me a second. Oh, we're at the incinerator. Why have I gone to the incinerator? <laughs> this is why we... I went in the complete opposite direction. Why did I go this way? I need to be over here. Oh my god. I did that to myself. Alright, hold on. Let me... Can I go through there? No, I think I'm gonna have to go around. I fucked up. Alright, hold on. Give me a sec. We made it out of BT territory, so we're good, but... I'm a better father now. Now, my stuff is getting... my stuff is rusting. We must get out of here. I love that I just picked a direction and ended up at the incinerator, which is the worst place to end up. But we can drive through... we can drive through here, that's good. Drive through here, let's see where this goes. Electricity fire. Wise man once said, Cowabunga. Told you. That's why I'm the best, baby. <laughs> Ooh, vehicles have a durability rating. Oh no. And will no longer move once this is depleted. To store a vehicle, park it on top of the vehicle elevator. Container repair spray cannot be used to restore vehicles. <gasps> to store, so we, we store it on top of the vehicle elevator. 
Where's the... I haven't... I haven't discovered a vehicle elevator before. Storing a vehicle in the garage. Hmm. Okay, when we go back to... I think maybe the distribution center should have one. And we can restore our... the durability. How can I check the status of that? Because all I can see for the bike in the bottom left here is... Um... Like the battery. It's got to be somewhere I could see... They have a durability rating, but where's the durability rating? Can't see the actual bike. I can see what the bike looks like. There's so much information on the screen that I'm just trying to make sure I can... I'm not missing it, but uh... All I can see is the battery of the bike. Maybe when I actually take it to a garage, it'll then tell me, it'll show me. There is like a little bar in the same area as the battery, so maybe that's the durability rating. It's just a bit short, uh, smaller and harder to see. I'm glad that there's a little pathway from the incinerator to take that took us out here so we didn't have to backtrack uh, immensely. That was good. But we'll make out after this, we'll head back to the Luden's van because there's some jobs to do for him that we can just drive to very relatively easily on our way through to Port Knot City. Keep on keeping on. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Clear. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until the. I wonder if there's a garage near here. Thank you, Sam. Safe travel, Sam. Good work. New order. Me to take to the Ludens van. Stress relief toys. Is that a different? I think that's. I wonder if the jobs have now changed. Alright, well, we've done these three jobs before. So I'll grab this one to go to the Ludens van. I'll see if there's a. I'll see if there's a garage around on this, on this way station. See, I can't see durability. It's just the battery thing. Who knows? Oh my god, I'm gonna keep doing that, aren't I? Yeah. Let me chuck my stuff back on the bike. Put into the bike. 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 Thank you. This, this is a garage? There's a parking space, so it's not really a garage by definition. No, the parking space is not it. Can I go in this room? It looks like it has like a no icon on there, so maybe not. No entry. Not even for special boys like me? Oh my god, I need to stop. I keep pressing triangle to, to get onto it because triangle is usually like a mount button, but no, it's the square button. Alright, there's no garage here. Weapons restriction selected. Beginning scan. Heading back to the loot and fan, and then we're gonna go to the distribution center. And there's probably some more there's probably gonna be something else there that I can do. Uh, and then we will 
make our way through to Port Knot City after another rest. Yeah, just, you know, there's, there's probably going to be points of, of me playing this game and making these journeys where I, I don't talk as much and we just take in the, uh, take in the scenery together. Just a reminder, you can, you know, listen listen to a playlist so you can have some music on, a bit lower lower volume than than me, you know. So you can still fill in the fill in the silence and the isolation with some tunes that fit the fit the themes of the game. Except for when we have the cool combat music come in. Ooh, here's something for the Ludens fan up here. Character figurines. <laughs> I just knocked it all off my. I just. I. I guess because I hit the rock, it all just came off. Jesus, get back, get back on here. I need to be careful. Okay, let's try that again without knocking the cliff face. Not expect to just knock everything off then. Oh, I've gone the gone a really awkward way to get up here. That's that's uh that's a pretty ru common running theme for this game so far is uh apocalypse runs into rocks. Good, Sam. Have faith. Have faith in the jumping ability of the track. Why else is there a generator right here? <laughs> yeah. See? Perfect. Perfect. So easy to accidentally entrust cargo. Like, man, if it wasn't for guys like you, we'd all be screwed. You really need to make sure you don't select know. "don't entrust" every time. How you do it? I really don't. Uh, respect, man. Seriously, respect. Respect, man. Again, really happy you stopped by, Sam. I'm a big fan of your work. A big fan. He's a big fan. New order available. Do you think he's a big fan? Delivering cargo. Hey there, Sam. Glad you can make it. This is fucking mint! <laughs> He's just like, this is mint, man! Collector's item! Can't believe you delivered me the one-to-one -one scale replica of Big Boss's metal arm from the Metal Gear Solid 5 Collector's Edition. New hologram data of Ludens fan. Always a pleasure, Sam. Shame we all... Take it easy, okay? Good work. New Any jobs from you, bud. Um. Oh, we haven't done this yet. The T-Rex model stolen by mules, so I can do this for him. Um. Yes. Take that. I'm gonna load a bunch of this on the trike. So then I'm barely carrying anything because I'm going to not take the trike. I'll leave the trike here because the destination is not too far away. Like 
We just have to go there, get it out of the post box, come back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a brief run. I'm gonna do it this way instead. I wanna we gotta stretch the you gotta stretch the legs a bit. That's why we've got these super cool exoskeleton legs. Apparently. So we can carry more stuff on our legs. Use cargo as a weapon. Throwing cargo. Press square to use handheld cargo as a makeshift weapon. Obviously that's going to damage. A hologram of a can will appear whenever you or other players are resting. Resting near a can will increase the speed at which Sam recovers. The more players that rest in a given spot, the bigger the can will grow. Oh, so that's why I've seen some really large ones. That makes sense. Everyone just rests in the same spot. That's cool. <coughs> Bitch, I got a Mazer gun. You wanna mess with me? Let's go. So we're on a solo sneaking mission. Actually, I might be able to use the strand on this guy instead. <laughs> yeah! Get fucking taken out, boy. in the tall grass, but I... This is a, like immensely satisfying, dude. I like that there's like a little bit of, little bit of sneaking that you can do, you know? A little bit of sneaking, a little bit of combat. I think that's a lot of fun. I might get this container a repair spray and the blood bag actually. Oh no, I can just craft blood bags. They're pretty, pretty inexpensive. I'll grab this though. <laughs> Hacking post box. Dinosaur model. Lost cargo to go to George Baton, George Baton, George Baton. That's a shame, George. You keep losing stuff. I'm not going to return that to you today. I'm busy. I've got T-Rex models to return. Love the amount of detail that goes into all these environments, even even just stuff that's like inside some little little areas, you know? Nice, this guy took a piss there. You know what? I need to take a piss at some point in time. Oh man. I've woken up. No no time for pissing. No time for pissing, snake. Why can't I pee? How do I pee again? Guys, how do you pee in this game? Isn't it? I thought it was uh, in the, the plus section. I can't pee. Maybe I just don't need to... Maybe I just don't need to pee. You ever just want to pee but you can't? Can you... I wonder if you can pee on your enemies. We'll have to experiment with that one day. I'll, I'll knock out some of these bad boys and I'll, and I'll pee on them. We'll see how they like it. Grow it, grow some mushrooms on them. That double jump is so sick. It's cool, like, it's cool that they even, like, you know, have combat in this game. Like, they have an enemy faction. Which I think is pretty cool, and a way for for it to make sense as well. Competing delivery people that steal cargo because of their obsession with it. I don't know. It's it's very cool, um, and the fact that you can be sneaky, you be sneaky with it. Take take people out with a strand, or like use a weapon, or body slam people. 
So it's creative. What's up, bud? I got you T Rex models. Metal Gear Rex. How's it hanging, Sam? Man, if it wasn't for guys like you, we'd all be screwed. And don't think we don't. To think. You're. Yeah, Coyote Brown. You now have the owner's permission to rest in this shelter. They a pr Do I have a private room in the Ludens fans' garage? Oh, hey, I've got a little something for you, if you're cool with it. Ooh. Here's the hoping it makes your life a little easier. Something from the Ludens fan. What you got for me? <sighs> Oh, I got a, you got a star from him too. Four stars, baby. Always a pleasure, Sam. I'm almost a five-star man. You ever seem to meet when you're hol Take it easy. Good work. New order available. Like here? Delivery terminal for further information. How do I rest in this place? Maybe I just have to select it from the actual terminal. I just can't choose a door. Let's have a look. Rest in shelter. Take advantage of the owner's hospitality and rest in a shelter. Yes. I want to see what happens. It is that room. Cool. I mean, it's so it's not like a cutscene or anything like that. You can just rest in here if you want. I mean, it is what it is. It's cool. Um, I need to leave. <laughs> I got work to do. All right, let's head to the distribution center, pick up another job, and then we'll sit. There's probably a garage here because this is where we actually got the vehicle, and then we should be able to rest and repair. And then begin our journey to uh, Port Knot City, and then after that, Lake Knot City. It's all right, Sam. You've got this. It's a bit bumpy. We got this. We got BTS apparently. Oh, actually, let me do that in my settings now before I forget. Uh, system options game settings I assume uh, BT encounter warning first time only there you go oh actually let's have a look default option for delivering when you deliver an insufficient amount of cargo make partial delivery and continue or complete order oh actually let's do that I'll have partial delivery Oh, good. Default option for delivering lost cargo. Don't do anything. You can change that so I don't have to manually do it. That's good. That's good. All right. I'll make sure it's don't do anything so I can manually do stuff. Cool. Let's have difficulties. We know hard and very hard. I don't know what the... I don't know what difficulties change because, I mean, there's not much combat. Maybe it makes the deliveries harder? I might look into that at some point. Also, apparently if we prioritize quality, it'll still be 60 FPS, but it might look a little prettier. So I'll change that to... Change that to quality. See if that really... Like, I, I feel like it'll probably be minimal. Like, I've, I have 1080p displays, so... Uh, I, don't, I don't really think it's going to be that... I don't think it's going to be that different, to be honest. Oh my god. Go, Sam. Go. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be... I don't think it's going to be that important, to be honest. Because, yeah, I got 1080p monitors, so, uh, honestly, I... Have the bet. Have a good fun with with 60 FPS. <laughs> forgotten what you're meant to be doing? Check the mails marked with the, the Half-Life symbol. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten that you're a big fan of Half-Life. 
How interesting. Uh, I remember that email. Yeah, the email from Benjamin Hancock talking about the whole um, Half-Life thing. We're going to have to check that out. Uh, so is there a garage in here? That I can take the vehicle? Is this the... okay, is this restoring the durability of the... Vehicle. Storing vehicles in the garage. Vehicles parked on the elevator can be stored in the garage by selecting garage from the delivery terminal. Vehicles that have taken damage will be repaired while in the garage. Any cargo loaded on the vehicles will be transferred to a private locker. Vehicles left on the elevator while you rest in the private room will automatically be stored in the garage. Alright, let me get all of this off so it doesn't even have to go into a private locker. Mm. Don't have any orders that I need from here, so that's fine. Lost cargo. Return. Cool. That's great. It's automatically on don't do anything. Good idea I fiddle around with the settings. Alright, I'm going to go to the garage. Rest in a private room. Deliver something back to the Ludens fan, and then Make our journey. So, garage. Let's have a look at what this is all about. Elevator. There we go. We can now see the durability. It's at 38%. There's no way for me to see that anywhere on the screen. So there you go. Uh, a battery-powered reverse trike. Standard issue for bridges operatives. Its cargo shelf can carry up to six pieces of medium-sized cargo. The trike is capable of speed boosts, wheelies, and jumps, all of which can be used to traverse difficult terrain. Uh, store the vehicle. Confirm. Vehicle. Goodbye, my bicycle friend. It'd be cool if we could change the appearance of the bike. Like some skins or something. Same way we can do our clothes and like BB and stuff, maybe. Alright, time to rest in the private room. And then we'll rest. Our weapon, will, uh, our weapon, our trike will get repaired. Read some or we'll read some emails. Mm. Blood bag while I'm sleeping, that's new. Cool. So you can't skip the normal cutscenes like this when it's new. So that means we didn't miss a BB cutscene earlier. It gives you the option to skip it. Okay, what else is new in here? Examine our equipment. Oh yeah, because we got a new color for our hat. Got a new color for our hat. I, and I have to do this to get rid of the... <laughs> to get rid of the exclamation mark. Otherwise it's gonna bug me. Let's read some emails. Two pieces of mail. Benjamin Hancock. You taking care of your BB? How you doing, Sam? And how's your BB? Me? I'm a bit worried. That's why I'm writing you, actually. You see, I used to have a BB of my own back in the day. I'd jack in whenever I went out on a run. Standard procedure and all that. Thing is, and this is just between you and me, I started... Well, I started to care about my BB. Yeah, yeah, I know. I went to all the briefings. It's just equipment. Don't empathize. Don't get attached. Yeah, well, easier said than done. Especially when it gave me a like. A piece of equipment can't do that, right? Equipment doesn't like being rocked either, or get soothed by the sight of a spinning Odra deck. Check out your tips if you're not sure how to do stuff like that. My BB loved it when I took us swimming when we just float on the water, but got real scared if we dove in or went under. Like a tool would give a shit about any of that. I bet your BB is the same, right? Reacts to things in ways that can't be explained away? Man, I miss those days with the little guy. You'll take good care of your BB, won't you, Sam? Ah, what am I saying? I know you will. Um, they're literally babies. They're actually humans, of course. <laughs> I just think that's like such a funny thing. Like they're just tools. It's like, I mean, they're actually babies, but sure. Uh, the Ludens fan. Are you a Ludens? 
I had this crazy idea, Sam. What if you're the perfect example of homo ludens? Think about it. You're with bridges, but you're not beholden to them. You're the only one who could expand the network, so they need you as much as you need them, if not more. Taken all together, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want, including coming way out here to visit me on a whim. Maybe what you do isn't play in the strictest sense of the word. Doesn't help you blow off steam, I expect, but you go about your business as you like, and your actions have a direct effect on our culture and our world. I'd say that's the sort of life any aspiring homo ludens would envy, don't you? Interesting. Uh, we got a, some more music. And manual tips. I would love if there was just an option to just mark all as red. Oh, there we go. I can expand the... Cool. I can expand... There we go. I can shrink it all down. That makes it easier. Wonderful. All right, let's get out of here. Our vehicle should be much more durable. Let's try and not drive around in the rain so much. There needs to be a little durability meter. No, look, I can skip this, but hold on, it's gonna do a BB cutscene, right? Why is this skippable? This should not be skippable! This should be mandatory! This should be mandatory. I might make a test somewhere you're open. A toast to Lisa. And to you. <laughs> Love how BB's memory. BB's memory flashes is just literally watching Mads Mikkelsen drink alcohol. <laughs> just like, yes, Dad, drink that bourbon. Drink that wine. <laughs> These are the memories that stick with me the most. Alright, give me my give me my bike. I want my bicycle. 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 Durability, 100 percent Look, brand new. It looks great. Because we can't customize anything related to the bike in the private room, I'm assuming we can't actually change the look of the vehicles, which, which is, uh, is a little bit of a missed opportunity, I think. A little bit of a missed opportunity. I'd love to be able to um, customize it. Like, even just like the color scheme, very bare bones stuff, color scheme would be fine. Alright, let's go. I need to make a quick trip back to Luden's fan because I think we've got some cargo, like one piece of cargo for him. Um, what, have we got? what have we got for the... Yeah, the lost cargo. Precious paintings. It's a large one too. So let's get that off our plate. Have a pleasant journey. Have a pleasant journey. So it seems that the BTs do move over time. Hey! So it's okay. It's still raining, so there's going to be BTs here. I'm going to try and see if we can maybe go around, and then I need to get up there. To the territory, it does it causes like a power shortage. Oh, there's BTs over here anyway. Jesus Christ, I may as well just be driving straight through this up the hill. Yep, okay, okay, okay. Where am 
ไปบีบีอัมโซ่สอรี่บิดยูนิดอะฮอลด์ออนบัดอัมบีอินอะทักต์บายไลค์อะอะเวลทิ้งวัตเดอะฟัคจัสฮัปเปอร์ทัสไลค์อะสควิดดอลฟินวัตเดอะเฮลล์อะสกอยงอนเฮีย Bikes back. Wonderful. Oh, I see. That was all fine. That was, that was see, that was, that was fine. That was. There's nothing to worry about. You see, that was that was fine. Nothing even happened there. That was that's fine. I didn't get attacked by a fucking squid dolphin. Why? Why would you think I got attacked by a squid dolphin? Oh my god! There's a bunch of fish on the floor. What the fuck? So I just got like they took my bike, they grabbed me and took me through black sludge water all the way up there for me to get eaten by a squid dolphin. And now there's a bunch of bunch of fish that have washed up on the shore. What is this game? The f what the hell just happened? <laughs> well, I'm glad you got to witness that. Whatever that was, I have no idea what that was. At least I got my bike back. I was scared. I just lost my bike. They just took it. They went, "Hey, we'll take this now. You have to walk the rest of the way." Holy crap! Oh, nice. That's perfect. Right outside the front door. God. <laughs> Something I just want to breathe quickly check in regards to vehicles. So Sam's battery. Just need some more stuff on vehicles. Speed boost or will spin more stationary. Okay, so L3 is a speed boost. So I haven't really, I haven't really taken advantage of the speed boost because I've mostly been very heavy. Here's your stuff back. Never talk to me again, Ludens fan. This was a journey to get hey, here. <laughs> I should have gone the other way. My God. The things I do for you, Ludens fan man. Always Jeff Keely. Only ever seem to meet with. Take it. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. Soothe my child. Make my make my child feel better again, because we upset him greatly. Oh, I didn't mean to rock you. I'm sorry. We upset him greatly. You need to be super gentle with this thing. You need to barely even move the controller, to be honest. As soon as I move the controller more than a little bit, you start rocking it, like shaking it. You just got to do a bit of just just do a bit of this. Just a little bit of a shake here and there, it's all good. Just to remind the BB that it's still alive, you know, just a bit of, just a bit of... There you are. <laughs> it's fine, I'm still getting love heart bubbles. Oop, maybe not that hard. <laughs> 
me try to take my controller back down. It's like, shh, it's all right. It's all right, baby. <laughs> Stop crying. Okay. Bye, Jeff Keeley. See you later. Oh, that, that speed boost is actually quite good. Drain that battery, though. I kind of forgot that there was a speed boost to be to be perfectly honest with you guys is I forgot that there was a speed boost because my brain went oh yeah that's the wheel that's like the wheel spin button you know it's like the one where you can do burnouts but no you can actually go really fast and I've been just taking it slow and cruisy this whole time I could lie to you and say that I was intentional I didn't want to use the speed boost but I genuinely forgot that's why I was like, I want to check the controls again. Because I forgot that I could save myself so much time. No regrets. Except for that. No regrets, however. Now, which way do I want to go from here, actually? I need to go... We can go through here, I guess. So let's plot a course. Let's... Plot a course. I think we can go through here. Maybe that'll work. I mean, who knows? I have no idea where I'm going, so let's just let's just go for it and see if it works. Let's see if it works out. I was expecting it to use like a shitload of battery to speed boost, but actually it doesn't, it's not, it's not too bad. And people are placing generators in nice places, and you know, I guess if I get into an emergency I could build one myself. I don't think I've got a PCC on me, so... Now would be a good time to stop for a minute and check your mailbox for mails marked with a half-life. There are people who need your health out there. Alright, let me read this mail again. Uh, this one... These two, right? Well, that's fine. And then there's this one. Uh, the river far to the north of the distribution center, west of Capital Knot City. The river to the north, west of Capital Knot City. Follow it northeast from the center. You should find what you're looking for. It's a cube, so it ought to be easy to spot. Take it to the distribution center west of Capital Knot City. <clears throat> okay, so river to the north of the distribution center. Follow it northeast from the center. You should find what you're looking for. Let me have a look. So this is the distribution center. Northeast. Oh, but that's like around here. It'd be nice if someone like just put the Half-Life sign to mark it for me. Then why is it asking me to check it around here? River to the north of the distribution center. Follow it northeast from the center. And you should find what you're looking for. It's a cube. Well, I wonder if uh, we should be able to we should be able to mark it. Interesting that it's asking us around here. Though it's kind of strange. All right, I'm gonna look for I'm gonna look for it. Let's uh, let's look for let's look for the cube. Guess it's a cube on a river. I've I will, I'll do some I'll do some journeying. We'll see if we find it. found it. It is a companion cube right here in the middle of goddamn BT territory. Companion cube. You didn't see me. Let's quickly get out of here because there's BTs here. And I need this as well. That's also to the distribution center. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh. 
It did it did like a little thumbs up. That's so cool. Alright, we have a companion cube, so it pick it picks up on the scanner, so that's that's pretty that's pretty easy. We got okay, we got the thing. Let's have a look. So it's a cube and a piece of cargo. All right, that's cool. I like just FYI, I've already I already said so before when I read the email. Like I haven't played, uh, I haven't played Half Life yet. It's on my to do list. I to to play through the the series. I do have them all purchased and installed on on Steam. Even even Alex, because I do have a VR headset. So one day I will eventually get through the Half Life series. Uh, but I, I don't know anything about it. So I hope that there's no like spoilers <laughs> in doing these missions, but you know, it's just a cube with a love heart on it. I, I, I don't know what it means though. Um, so hopefully there's like, I'm not going to get spoiled for Half-Life and Death Stranding. So I think that would just be hilarious. Um, but yeah, I don't, like I said, in the previous episode, I don't know anything about it yet. <laughs> You're trying to put the rest. Alright, I got you your, your lovely package, so I guess he will send me an email to like follow up with it or something. Oh, before I forget, this is for you. Is it a star or is it a reward for returning you a cube? <gasps> More sunglasses. He has given you Gordon glasses. Oh, okay. Okay. Bye, Sam. We got glasses. Good work. New order available. Please access. You really are a great deliverer. There we go. So we got an, we got an email from him as well. Mail. Thanks, Sam. You really are as great as they say. I knew I could trust you, and now I'm closer to achieving my goal. But I've still got a ways to go yet. That was just one step on my journey. I'm going to need your help again, Mr. Great Deliverer. Anyway, did you like those special glasses I gave you? Gordon glasses, I call them, as worn by one of my world's preeminent scientific geniuses. I reckon they do a good job of bringing out your natural tough guy looks. Alright, so we got some Half-Life glasses. Glasses worn by a legendary genius physicist. They make their wearer look wise and knowledgeable, just like Gordon himself. The glasses were made to special specifications, and their color scheme is non-customizable, but they should be a perfect fit for Sam's face. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, uh, okay. I'm assuming this is, uh, like, because I, like, I know this last name, I think, of the Half-Life main character is, like, Freeman, so Gordon Freeman, I guess, and then he wears glasses. Spoiler alert, guys, the main character wears glasses. <laughs> There's no way, there is like no way that Kojima's glasses are not in this game then. If you can have different types of glasses, there's no way Kojima would not put his own glasses in the game. You'd have to. That's just literally what he does. Okay, I love it. We did the we did the Half-Life mission. There you go. And now we go to and now we go to Port Nut City. <laughs> It's so interesting. So we're gonna get items that are from or related to the games. So I guess that that's kind of cool. Um, I was scared to read the description for the glasses uh, briefly for reasons that are that are pretty obvious. But um, I'll I'll have to tread carefully. But also, if if those of you who have played the game, because I'm assuming this is a, that's a PC collaboration thing that's also been included in the PS5 Director's Cut release. Uh, if you guys have played the PC version, or if you're aware of the uh, those missions, if they contain any like spoilers for the game, let me let me know. If if they're just innocent things like these are the glasses of the main character, then that's that's fine. But uh, we will see we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Okay, let's try and tread carefully so I don't end up getting my bike taken underground. Let's see how good this path is that I've... Oh, never mind. Never mind, guys. Never mind. I'm screwed. Speed boost out of here. I jumped and it didn't go very well. <laughs> Shit. I jumped a bit too far. Oh. 
I really need to not be so careless with this. There we go. Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay. Time to get dragged to the giant dolphin squid again. Is there a way that I could resist at this point? I don't think so. I think I'm done. Okay, that's just a thing that happens. Squid dolphin is just a thing that happens. That's good. Okay, BB, let's just climb up here. I think if we just survive for long enough, then we'll be okay, because then it eventually just decides to stop coming for us. It can eat me through through surfaces. I didn't think that to be possible, but here we are. Just climb. It's okay, BB. <gasps> it's literally just appearing out of the fucking no. Oh my god, BB, it's okay. shooting stuff at me. Oh. oh god, the BB is approaching autotoxemia. Okay, we made it. Holy fuck. Baby. No, it's okay, baby. I gotcha. I gotcha. We're okay. Oh, I, no, I didn't, I didn't say stop. I didn't say stop. I'm sorry, but I fucked up. I fucked up, okay? Exactly. You're so happy, okay? I, 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 I know. I should stop messing with the squid dolphins. Dad's bike is a bit too loud. And it pisses off BTs, okay? We're good. Just need to bring you back to full. I don't know if his stress just uh, levels uh, relax automatically over time, but we're, we're getting him up there. Okay. See, you're, you're beautiful, child. You're good. <laughs> I, I chose a very bad path to take. Uh, clearly. Oh my god. Fuck. BB, it's so fine. I promise you, everything's gonna be just fine. <laughs> what are you crying for? I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not. I'm not accidentally crashing us onto the into every single surface possible and getting eaten by fish. Yeah, see, everything's fine, buddy. Give me a love heart bubble. There we go. Love heart bubbles. That's what we're here for. <coughs> Wonderful. See? Sometimes you just need to accidentally get fucking... Um, absolutely, uh, absolutely crushed. By the weight of a, by the weight of a squid dolphin, in in the middle of time fall, and then, you know, you'll be you'll be fine. See, everything's fine, and then it's no longer raining. And so that was the plan all along. Something for the Ludens fan here as well. We picked a terrible pathway, didn't we? I didn't think there'd be so many rocks. It's just, you know... You, 
can do that though if you want. You can get some you can get some decent air if you speed boost and just jump. Why can't I pick it up? I'm right next to it. Flawless, look at that journey. There we go. <laughs> just jump over all the rocks. There we go. Oh be careful. I don't know if that's a cliff. I mean, look, uh, what I will say is, remember, Sam was driving pretty recklessly. Sam was driving pretty recklessly at the beginning of the game. And he lost his bike because of it, so I'm just being in character. A generator guys is there one nearby I made it with no battery left like no battery left <laughs> as you can see in the corner no battery tense Made it. Flawless. Oh, we're gonna need to store our vehicle so we can restore its durability and its battery as well. Here we go. So I think we need to link this place up to the uh, link this place up to the chiral network. We made it. Oh man, the journey. It was it was uh, such an easy, pleasant, and smooth journey. Nothing went wrong whatsoever. Nothing went wrong. It was it was perfectly fine. <laughs> and we've delivered the cum. The cum and eggs. They will make a good good scrambled egg breakfast for everyone. All because of us. You the porter? The one man army sent to do the work of a team? You and your two feet to fill all them boots. Looks like everything's more or less intact. About what I expect from a guy running solo. Did he give us some, uh... Our cargo did take some damage. Our cargo did take some damage. That is a little bit rough. We'll probably get... not. We're not going to get an S for that, that's for sure. That is the dumbest delivery route I've ever seen. <laughs> That's because we had to do so much backtracking. <laughs> oh, terrible. I mean, it's okay. It's an A grade, right? And then we got our Asylums for the Feeling song. And our first, 
Uh, well, you got the two and two and almost three stars of a connection level. It's not bad. We could have done that a little bit better, though. That's for sure. Delivery volume bumped up to twenty. Expert mover. You have achieved delivery volume grade twenty. You can now carry more cargo, baby. Let's so link up this chiral network. A new chiral age or some shit. Yeah. Is that cool? Hell yeah! Go for it. Been waiting forever and a day for this. Okay, buddy. <laughs> You're gonna issue us into a new chiral age or some shit. Beep Nice, and I think the, if once we make it to New Lake City, no, Lake something city, Lake not city, then that's the first part of the region done. You know, Port Not City has joined the UCA, and we got uh, four new interviews and a whole bunch more stuff. Sweet. Wait. Victor Frank. Where'd you get that? That little guy. Same as mine. Where the hell did you get it? Ooh. I can't really say. But the little guy came with the pod, if you gotta know. And who'd you get the pod from? Igor, from Corpse Disposal. My little brother. Oh, wow. I actually thought their faces looked similar. He just gave one of these to you. Why? I was there with him, at the end. We were moving a body. Things went to shit. There's BTs everywhere. And one of them grabbed him. So he told me to take it and run. That right. So what's your story? You lived through a catastrophe like that, only to keep on doing the same work? Okay. Been a long time coming, I suppose. You take good care of that little guy. He belongs with the expedition. With you. All right. Better if you take this with you too, I reckon. Can't think of anyone who could use it more. I was going to wait until that, uh, the interaction of the cutscene is over, because I was going to point out, it's like, his face looks like the dude from the beginning of the game, and I wondered if that was like, I wonder what the point of that was, but there you go. That's actually really neat that uh, it showcases, you know, connection between a character you met at the very beginning of the game. That's very cool. Um, let's carry, let's grab this stuff that he's given to us, and auto-arrange cargo. Thanks, man. Gave me some stuff. Sam, you've done it. Port Knot City is back on the grid. This community, a part of the UCA. Their data, a part of our shared wisdom. With enough time and enough chiral printers, they'll be able to build ships. Oh, wow. And one day, the waters will be ours again. All because you led the way. Though what follows in your wake isn't always good. Any city that joins the UCA becomes a bigger target for the terrorists. But we have to accept the dangers and press on. No matter what. The rest of America is waiting, Sam. Waiting for you to take the first step and connect them to the chiral network. I know you can reach them. Make us whole again. Thanks. One more C in the UCA, huh? So, you fix it across the lake and head west? Yeah. We got a boat? No. Not for years now. Terrorists took out everything bridges that floats. Only boat in town belongs to a private courier. Private courier? Alta. Fragile Express? That's the one. I already spoke with their rep. 
I'm having them load the boat with some of the supplies you brought us. I'll bet the folks in Lake Knot will be tickled pink to see someone come into port. Been a while, I expect. Head on down to the harbor when you're ready. It's right outside the distro center. Ooh, bit stormy out. Don't worry. Port Knot never gets the rain. Feel free to rest up in your room before you head out. Oh, it's very interesting that uh, Amelie's uh, hologram is like heavenly and golden as compared to everyone else. She's like, I'm the angel messenger when I pop in to talk to you. Wild. Oh, you actually see the bike automatically go in the garage there. That's sick. There you go. It is, we are long overdue for a shower. Look at us. I'm gonna try and really take the whole BT encounters a little more careful than what I've been doing. I've certainly gotten a little bit careless on the bike, that's for sure. Uh, so I think I'm gonna try and get into the habit of uh, using those grenades as well. We'll hop off the bike and maybe like clear an area or just like navigate it a little more carefully. <laughs> I love that like we just go to sleep with our fucking dirt covered face. Ah, may I receive from Victor Frank about his brother. Let's take a shower so we can get rid of this, uh, get rid of our face gunk. And then we'll, uh, and then we'll read some emails. So we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be hooking up with Fragile Express once again. I wonder if we'll be seeing, um, seeing that character again from the beginning of the game. Because I was expecting to maybe actually see her, um... I didn't know how recurring of a character she was going to be, but it's, it's certainly been a while since we've since we've seen her again. Mind you, we've been busy being the ultimate delivery man. You can produce new items, blood bags, and the extra grenades while showering and sleeping. Any items created this way will be stored in a private locker. Love that. Okay. Whenever Norman Reedus is posing, you can't interact with anything. <laughs> uh, cool. All right, let's read some read some mail, and then we'll uh, we'll check out the next thing to do. And we got some interviews as well, so we'll read these interviews. Uh, Victor Frank about my brother. Ever since you told me about my brother, I haven't been able to stop thinking about him. I want to make one thing clear, though. I don't blame you for what happened. Igor wouldn't either. I know that. It's weird, though. We weren't all that close, and back when he was alive, I'd go weeks without thinking about him. But now, well, ain't that the way things always go? You still got that little keepsake of his? Sounds kind of stupid, but I've started thinking about it. Uh, I've started thinking of it as, like, his alter ego or something. You know it was his dream to go west with the second expedition, right? He never made it, but if his favorite toy does, it's almost, it almost feels like uh, it would make up for it, at least a little. You should show the little guy the sights now, you hear? Lord knows I'll never get to see him. That's really cool. Uh, Alright, we've got some interviews. We've got three from Die Hard Man, and we've got another one from Bridges Staff. Let's start with Bridges Staff. So, time fall and power failures. Ah, oh, so this was actually Igor. There you go. So, we get some more information from, uh, from uh, Igor's uh, perspective specifically. So, I volunteered to join Bridges. Signed up with my brother Victor. See, we both remember when America was still America. When we still had planes and satellites. When we were still connected to everyone and everything. The world was different, bigger, and we wanted it back. He was chosen for the first expedition and hit the road damn near straight away. Me, I got told to hang back here in Central, which was okay I guess. Corpse disposal means taking your fair share of time fall in the line of duty. You get a sense for it after a while, a sixth sense for when the clouds are about to open up. Of course, the clouds themselves are a big tell, and an inverse rainbow is a guarantee you're in for some shit. But there are smaller signs too, changes in the air, a smell on the wind. When it hits, you've got power outages to deal with. Far as I understand it, which ain't all that far, it's to do with high concentrations of chiralium causing electromagnetic interference or something, which also interacts with water and kicks up clouds of ozone, which then makes the temperature drop like a rock. Anyway, I may be used to time fall, but that don't mean I'm immune to it. Believe me, I'm younger than I look. My big bro would take a lot of pleasure in telling you that if he could see me now. Ah, wow, okay, so <laughs> that's so interesting, like, when he's just like, I'm, uh, believe me, I'm younger than I look, and that's, like, the whole situation with, he's probably, you know, got some time fall, uh, in his time, at least, like, little sprays of it that have aged him slowly over time, so there you go, 
Uh, let's have a look at uh, Die Hard Man's stuff. So we got these three. Uh, the chiral network experiments between Central and Capital One. Madam President, this will be your new office from today. The relocation of your official residence has also been completed and the entire medical team has been brought along as well. Rest assured that information regarding this move has been shared on a need-to-know basis only. I understand that, following the loss of New York, you wish to direct the reconstruction efforts from Central Knot City, but in light of recent separatist activity on the eastern seaboard, we no longer consider it safe. We will see to it that the people continue to believe you are in Central, and Bridges HQ will operate as normal, as per your orders that network research teams and delivery systems management have all been covertly transferred here to Capital Knot City. We are doing our utmost to expedite testing of the chiral network link between Central and Capital, while not neglecting your immediate medical needs, of course. This will be our base of operations for the next stage in the fight to rebuild America. Madam President, I'm happy to report that the trial, one, trial run was a success. The connection between Central and Capital was established without incident, no chiral spikes or other irregularities. The Cupid functioned within acceptable parameters as well. There's a lot of work to do. Chiral holograms, chiral printing, and data recovery have yet to be proven viable, but the confirmation that data can be sent via the chiral network is a huge step forward for the UCA. Our next step will be to use cupids to establish connections with the other cities. Preparations for the second expedition are underway already. Uh, we're still trying to track Sam down, but as soon as he's back with us, he'll be given his new command. And that was a year ago. Mules and local porters, two years ago. When people hear mules, they think junkies driven crazy by a desire to steal supplies we so desperately need to survive. Lucky for us, not all couriers are predisposed to this condition. Not all mules, in fact. They were professionals once, and some still are. Some even complete proper deliveries from time to time. Fragile Express has been known to use them, along with independent porters. For those at risk of losing it, they say the only way to stave off the syndrome is to join a distro organization with strong leadership and support to help you keep on the straight and narrow. Once you can strike out on your own, uh, or you can strike out on your own, but that's no easy path. There's a reason guys who run solo have a reputation for being bulletproof. Interesting. There you go. Uh, and I think with I think with that one, guys, uh, once we come to the end here, we've read some data. We've linked up Port Knot City. Uh, our next destination is to head to the harbor so we can go across the lake uh, to Lake Knot City, get ourselves a boat with Fragile Express. We're going to do that next time. So uh, thank you so much for watching uh, this episode of Death Stranding. Again, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know how you're feeling. Let me know if you're enjoying the content. Uh, I certainly hope you are. I'm having a great time. Just taking it easy in this game and uh, figuring it out as we go along. Very excited to reach a new city uh, next time as well. So I'll see you then, guys. Thank you.